everyone, welcome to Social Media Hangout Time, but we're going to be changing that as of today. So I'm going to welcome Terry. Terry's with me today. Hey again, how are we? Good, good. You're doing great. We, I think today is the day to release our new name. Uh, we have been talking about it a little bit here and there, but I think because of our discussion today and what the show is going to be about, it's probably time to release what we're going to be in. And if you're watching, you know it right now because they're seeing it on the screen. Correct? Kind of like a little giveaway. We should have added the <laughs> overlay after the big reveal. It's kind of like a little reveal now. But remember, some people are listening, and so they're still the curious ones because if they're listening, they don't they don't know. They don't know. Let's not tell them. I, I say yeah. we let them hang on a little bit. No, you guys gotta go to YouTube. You gotta go to YouTube and find out. There you Let's go. Let's talk about the weather or something for a minute, and you know, just change it up. <laughs> let's let's have them guess. There's one word that's staying the same. Oh, one word. Yes. There's a hint. There's a hint. I wonder which word it would be. If you had to guess which word it was, which word would you guess? I would have guessed social. You would have guessed social? Mm -hmm. I kind of liked hangout. Oh, oh, see, see. Well, now we gave away two. We took away two. This is like right. a math problem or something here. <laughs> Why would they keep media? I don't get it. <laughs> the hell kind of so easy. <laughs> Uh, I think they well, figured out now. I think they might have. Okay, we've deducted it down. So we kept the word time, but we want to change it to, and this is because we can get into why we did this, business growth time. So it's business, business growth, growth time. Business growth time, yeah. Like we have a new logo, we have a new look, and everything is going to be changing other than a lot of the same lessons and guests and, and things like that are going to be very similar, but we're going to expand on it and make it a little bit different, and that's what our show is going to be about today, correct? Yeah, I mean, really, the conversation started about what is social media hangout time and really what was the purpose of doing social media hangout time or social media in general. So we try to just knock it up a level, right? Where, what is it for? What was the purpose? And that's kind of how we came to it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did a lot of deduct deductions. We tried this, we tried that. We were taught, we, you know, we had a lot of discussion about it. And Terry comes from a networking world. He is one of the largest networkers in Detroit. We will talk a little bit more deep on that because I know some people have been listening to the show for a while so they might know my background but they don't necessarily know your background Terry and we we've had guests so quickly that we haven't discussed this very much so we should you know it is more than social media but obviously business growth can come from social media too correct? If you're doing it right, why else would you be doing it if you're not doing it for some level of business growth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Unless you're I just doing it for fun and you're not a business, but then you're probably not going to be listening to the show either. Correct? That's kind of what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> so I, we could have gone with ego hangout time if you wanted to do it that way. That would have been good. <laughs> exactly. Well, Terry, so like, backing this up, I want to talk a little bit about your new, you have a major project right now, and telling people what what do you do in, in Detroit? I know you're a, know a, just a ton of people, and you have an event coming up, so let's talk about that a little bit. All right, so uh, let's do the event, and then we'll talk about the background. Does that seem reasonable? Either way. All right, so the event is called 313 D-Love. Uh, it started actually as a Twitter campaign, so I, I have a fairly strong social media background as well. It started as a Twitter campaign on March 13th in 2012. 313, March 13th, our area code here in the Detroit area is 313. And literally up until 1993, the entire metropolitan area was 313. You know, St. Paul's now 763. Isn't that right? Is that the area code in St. Paul? Yeah, so, so I'm a 763. I'm 651. You're 651. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I lived in Minnesota, we had one area code. We were 612. 612. Mm -hmm. right? That was it. It was probably that way for the entire state, really. Mm -hmm. um, 
in Detroit, it was 313 up until 1993. If you lived anywhere in southeastern Michigan, you know, Michigan's cool, right? Because you can just go, oh, yeah, we live right here. You know, you just use the hand because it looks like a man. So that whole area, the thumb and south toward the center part, was all 313. And it was interesting because when they did the area code overlays, um, they separated. The first thing to do was, you're Detroit 313. And then everything around you is no longer 313. Detroit has a history, as some of you know, of not being the most, let's call it, elevated socioeconomic status. How's that? It's a little less than that. Oddly enough, the county just north of Detroit, literally they border, uh, is the third wealthiest county in the entire country. So when you talk about disparity of class, it's right here. So it was almost like they put up another artificial line, right? So a, a demarcation point, which we don't need more of that. We need less of that. We need to break those boundaries down. So anyway, it's a little history lesson. Hmm. In 2012, Detroit was almost starting to come back. You could get a sense that things were happening. People were excited. So I decided to create this thing with a hashtag, 313DLove. The idea was very simple. Tweet what you love about our city. And what happened subsequently was it caught enough traction, got enough attention, that it actually trended worldwide on Twitter. Right? And as social media people know, that means it was the top 10 topic on Twitter for that Neat. time period. Yeah, Thanks. that's cool. Pretty sweet, right? Pretty sweet. So in 2013, we did the same thing. We just did it as an as a actual Twitter campaign, partially because my dad was sick, and I knew he was going to pass relatively soon. And he actually ended up passing away on March 12th of 2013. So I was supposed to be on TV that evening, and I was like, uh, I'm in the hospital. My dad's dying. I, somebody else go cover this, make this happen. I can't. I'm not leaving to go do that. That's just dumb. Everybody's got to have priorities, right? Sure. Um, so, in, but in 2014, it was a little bit like wide open. I could do what I want. Wasn't worried about that. So we had an event last year. And we partnered with this gorgeous museum called the Charles Wright Museum of African American History. And it is the single largest museum of African American history in the world. And there's all kinds of installations and displays, and it's got this kick-ass rotunda where you can be in one part of the building and talk, and you can be have someone else 300 feet away, and it sounds like you're talking right to them and only them. The acoustics in it are wild, and it's just it's a beautiful, beautiful structure. So they're a great partner, and I'm excited to be working with them again this year, March 15th. We're bringing some really prominent Detroiters, that people that have found success in our great city because they love what they do, and it shows, right? And we always talk about passion being the driving force. So these folks are really passionate about the work they do. They do a great job of it, and they're really passionate about our city. So you know, one of the gentlemen is a gentleman named Dr. Nandi. Uh, he's got a TV show called Ask Dr. Navi, and it's got a, a very strong health bias to it, of course. Um, but he's really sincere about, I'm not going to be promoting products because they get, I get paid. That's BS. I'm going to be talking about things that I do that are real, that are life-changing. And this guy, in the last three weeks, maybe four weeks, uh, he's been in India. He was down in Florida. He's in Vegas right now. He was somewhere else in between that was in Europe somewhere. I mean, he's traveling all over the globe, and he's always talking about Detroit and spreading great, great news from Detroit. I said it a long time ago during a panel discussion in 2008. Said if, uh, I said the rest of the world won't stop bashing Detroit until we stop bashing it first, because we have a love-hate relationship. This county that I live in that's just a little bit north of Detroit, if there's been a long history. Some of the government in Detroit historically has been a little bit corrupt. I, heck, our former mayor is in prison. I, that's prison with a P, 
you don't end up in prison if you didn't do a few things wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's been some um, there's been some legitimate reason to have some distrust and some problems between the areas, but all of that's going away. And you go down there now, the energy's changed. The amount of building and new construction that's going on. They're changing some of the main thoroughways or main roadways through. Um, there's games and opportunity and new restaurants and cuisine that's coming in and people, literally people. Detroit's one of the only major metropolitan areas in our in our country that has consistently lost residents year after year. And last year was the first year of the trip. And so that's a real legitimate change. So the event's cool. We're going to be connecting with people. Um, I, I mentioned Dr. Nandi. A gentleman named David Farbman is going to be our MC. Farbs is a probably the coolest cat I've met in a long time. Uh, he recently wrote a book. It's a New York Times bestseller called The Hunt. He's an avid, avid outdoorsman, hunter. So he equates the work he does in the boardroom to being in a tree stand. And I, I don't hunt. I've never shot anything except for maybe I shot my mouth off a couple of times. Um, but he really zones in on this. And it almost makes you want to go hunt. And it's, the analogies are really, really cool. So he's going to be there. There's this lovely lady named Satori Shakur. She runs this event called the Secret Society of Twisted Storytellers. And I've gone two or three times. And it's five different speakers over the course of a two-hour period that speak from 20 to 30 minutes. You don't even pay attention to their time. And, and they're literally telling the story of their lives. And through each one, you'll laugh. Some of them you'll cry. Some of them will just be furious. I mean, because it's, it's like your most intimate details brought out in the story in front of 300 of your closest friends who you've never met before. And it's, uh, it's an amazing experience. Huh. One, Sounds cool. It's, it's really, really cool. It's, uh, I wonder if they have something like that in the Twin Cities. I'll have to, I'll have to ask. If Not like quite it. the same thing, but, you know, I think it's so different in Detroit. I mean, it's just, like you said, it's, it's a city that a lot of people have just talked about, and it's had a lot of hard times. I mean... So for you guys to do something on the positive end is such a, it's so positive. And to do it year after year, I think it's a great thing. It is, and it's, it's been going it's well received. I don't know if you can see the showcase. Obviously, if you listen to the podcast, you can't. But, you know, we've been really fortunate. We've got some great organizations that are sponsoring us. You know, the United Way of Southeastern Michigan is one of them. So it's nice to see a, a charitable organization get behind an event like this. Blue Cross Blue Shield is a great sponsor and a great partner of this event. Uh, Ray Lake and Motor Village, who's been a client of mine for the past couple of years, very, very cool. Opportunity Detroit, which is an organization that was actually started um, kind of to encourage people to come down to the city. It's one of the, it's not necessarily the Quicken Loans family, it's the Bedrock family, which is what Quicken Loans is part of. So. It's cool. LJPR is one of the smartest dude I know, literally a guy named Leon LeBrec. Leon is the L in LJPR. If you're interested in mathematics and philosophy and metaphysics, Leon wrote a book called The Odyssey of 40 Days, and it's the most brilliant trip, mind trip, I've ever been on. You know, it's a lot of sacred geometry. So Leon LeBrec, the Odyssey of Forty Days, good stuff. Um, and then it's just, it's just cool. My favorite part of this event, though, and it hasn't happened yet, we've got a twelve-year-old boy, young man named Robbie Demers. Robbie's twelve. Three years ago, three and a half years ago, he was riding downtown with his grandmother, and he saw someone that didn't have a house, and he just sitting on the side of the road. Cold. And Robbie said, why is that person sitting there? And his grandmother said, because they're homeless. And he said, what does that mean? It's just sort of that means they don't have any place to live. And he's like, well, that's not right. <laughs> she, of course, agreed, but not much you could do about it. He'd never seen a homeless person. On that trip, he saw several homeless people. 
and decided that he wanted to start eating and start bringing them blankets. So the next week, he made his grandmother take them down, set up a table, brought some peanut butter, and brought some bread and fed them. Fast forward now, he feeds on average 200 homeless people per week through his foundation, the Emers Foundation. And they set up and do hot plates, and I mean, it's an amazing thing. Sometimes they bring blankets and clothing and socks and jackets in the wintertime. He has a little sister who's uh, eight or nine, and she brings food and things for the homeless animals that are down there. It's just the most amazing story. I can't wait to hear from this young man. Cool. Years old, man. Twelve it's years old. Twelve years old. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's, you know, you don't see that too often. You know, no. you just don't. <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. So, yeah, my wife has been um, riding shotgun with me on this. And the website, 313dlove.com, she basically put the whole thing together by herself, which is impressive because she's never built a website before. Had a couple of friends that did a, a little bit of the heavy lifting, but she's a great webmaster, man. People are sending in their files, their logos. You know, this you'll see Yoga Shelter roll through here at some point in the next couple of minutes. We just got that logo this morning. It's already on the website, and that's how that's how she's been handling. She's driving me a little bit nuts, right? Um, but probably not half as nuts as I'm driving her, so I'm sure it evens up. So it's been cool. We've got a great team, and it's going to be a really good day. Oh, shoot. The coolest thing, 313 on 313, we're encouraging people all around the world to tweet what they love about Detroit. I don't want to be all Kim Kardashian, but our goal is, of course, to break Twitter. Cool. That's cool. So they want, they need to use the hashtag 313DLove. Yes, ma'am. On 313. And that's on 313. Yeah, and you can do it any time during the day. We're not really that particular. But sure. during the event, we'll have a break, and we'll have about 300 people in the room, and we will stop, literally, and get your phones, tweet right now, and we'll be showing it up on the on the screen, right? So we'll be tracking it. And we, we only trended nationally last year, and we didn't break... Uh, we were number two because the remember I used the car accident itself by Southwest last year, the big uh, automobile accident that was major major topic at the time we were doing it. So mm. <laughs> you never know what world events will happen exactly. So at that time, it's a good point. I know it's a problem when you're trying when you're physically trying to make news. Right? Because I, I don't try and do it very often, yeah. but when I do, it's going to be positive. When you're trying to make news, somebody's always screwing up and doing something shitty and mean and nasty, and that takes precedent. Because it does. Our world it does. a little jacked it's, up still. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's sad. That, that could be a whole topic for another day, but I, uh, yeah, I don't like the news. I just am not a news watcher because it's also negative. So that's, that's a whole different subject, but it's something that, um, yeah, it, it does, and it's sad because it does overtake the good a lot of times. So, yeah. So let's hope for no accidents on 313, no nothing, and calm, peaceful on 313. Hey, can you tell people also, that are in the area that might be interested in showing up that day, what they need to do to get there. Yeah, that's a great idea. So, you know, we've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash 313dlove. Our event right uh, tickets are through there. We're also at 313dlove.com, just right on the website. You can buy tickets through the site. Um, we'll probably end up selling tickets through at the door. Our ticket prices, because I think I'm funny, are $31.30, right? And my wife was very, very clear that uh, she is not going to be handing out change. So if you go to the door, tickets may be a little bit lower. They may be 30 bucks. I'm like, uh, normally they charge more at the door. We should make them 40 So yeah. We'll, yeah. Figure, we'll figure that out in a minute. Um, but, yeah, they just... Just be there. And then we're doing a march, like around the museum. It's about a mile track. Um, and I'm still not really sure why we're doing it. So 
<laughs> no, we're doing it to bring awareness to what's going on, right? We're trying very hard to get the city to proclaim this as an actual holiday, mm -hmm. proclaim it as Detroit Day on March 13th. So that's one of the big, uh, big cool things about. 